It is time once again for the podcast we call the But God Podcast. But for God, this certainly wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be happening. And we probably wouldn't all be here again today to talk about the glory that is our Heavenly Father and uh, the salvation that comes from Jesus Christ and our paths as we walk through life on the way to uh, eventually our, our heavenly home. We, we pray <laughs> and we believe. Uh, and uh, Rick Green is here. He was the, uh, the architect behind this whole thing. And the guy said, yeah, we ought to do a podcast. So we are. Good morning. Brother Green, how are you? Good morning, you? Gary. Thank you for having me, and I love these Saturday mornings. I love them. Well, and and no matter what time of the day or what day it is when you're hearing this, but yeah, it's great to get together on a, on a Saturday morning. Rick does a, a a Bible verse with us every Saturday morning on my Saturday morning show on 700 WLW. We have, I understand, another Rick with That's us. Right. It's it's the double Rick. Uh, Double Rick Podcast, the Butt God Double Rick Podcast. Would you introduce our guest, Mr. Green? You forgot his last name. That's okay. Rick's fine. That Rick's fine. But it's uh, it's Rick Fisher. But okay, if anybody's Rick. interested. Rick and I met. Uh, well, it's been years ago, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we we take care of the Oak Hill School District, and uh, Rick uh, Rick's been running around there making sure that place is spick and span uh i think he met my son uh we were, he was doing volunteer hours there uh helping and uh he uh he touched his his life a little bit too just uh, the character of rick uh will grab your attention for sure oh it so, did me the yep, first so, time i met him yep so that's where we met and uh even this year i hadn't seen rick in a while uh we went there and uh, my son and I, he's 21 now, old enough to work with Pops. Uh, he got his extinguisher license, and so he was helping me with that. And uh, Rick stopped us, and we had a wonderful conversation about the Lord, and uh, that's kind of what spurned this this whole uh, engagement here on. Oh, fantastic. So you say extinguisher license. What do you do, Rick? Uh, so we own a small fire protection uh, company. Yeah, so we do fire alarms, uh, fire extinguishers, obviously, um, uh, sprinkler systems, kitchen hoods, and fire protection. Not quite a firefighter, but I feel like I give a little bit. Services, uh, you know, my heart's built around service, so I do like doing what I do. So, well, let's nice. get to the meat of the matter. Let sure. me tell you. Uh, let let you tell us about your journey with the Lord and and yeah. where that started and where it's gotten you. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I was uh, I was born, raised in Hamilton. Um, I'm from a long line of uh, folks from uh, southern Kentucky, Corbin area, Williamsburg, uh, down by Jellico. Um, Is that why they call it Hamiltucky? Hamiltucky, <laughs> yeah. I it, that used to bother me. Today, I'm 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 proud of it uh, because you know the journey um, and and it gave me character essentially. And um, so uh, yeah, so found out uh, you know my we we. We call my grandmother Mamaw. Uh, that's sure. just what we did in Hamilton. And Mamaw was from uh, down there, and she was a, a debt uh, payment for uh, uh, what was owed by her father and mother, which I guess that's what they did down there in the times. Not really sure. But uh, anyway, she was given to a an older gentleman, um, and uh, she was a, a young teenager, uh, ended up having five kids, one which was my mother. Um, and I guess my uh, if you call him Papa, was kind of crazy. Uh, uh, she she uh, finally had had enough, became a, an adult, and made an adult decision to move up uh, with some family up into Hamilton area. So uh, then, uh, uh, you know, my mother, who was also a teenager, met my father, got married at 16 and 17 years old, back down in Tennessee, which where it was legal apparently, um, and then. Uh, so they were married uh, for about a year, year and a half. Uh, I have a, a, a sister about a year older than me, um, and then uh, I was born. And about six months into my uh, existence here on Earth, uh, they divorced, um, and then kind of things, you know, uh, became a little unhinged for my mother. You know, she's a teenager raising two kids, single. Um, oh yeah. Now my uh, come to find out, my my uh, father's good friend had, I guess he would had some interest in my mother. Well, he becomes uh, what I thought was my father because, again, I was six months old. Um, and uh, 
I didn't know any better until I got old enough to go to kindergarten-ish. And I was like, wait a second, my last name's not the same as your last name. There's some, why don't I have your last name? And uh, they spilled the beans, you know, I, I, I'm, he's not my real father. And um, so his, his background was pretty rough. Um, it, it, what happened at the house was uh, I remember him working maybe a couple months at a, a moving, you know, he did moving uh, for just a bit. I guess it was pretty physical work. Um, but in the, it, it, to make the real money, he was, uh, he was a, a drug you know, salesman, uh, illegal, obviously he wasn't yeah. a pharmacist, but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, we had uh, a lot of stuff, uh, running around a lot of parties growing up. Um, I remember, uh, going downstairs, uh, finding people passed out all over the floors and I'd have to walk over their bodies to go, you know, make myself a bowl of cereal in the kitchen, um, and things like that. Um, uh, you know, seeing, you know, people, you know, Snorting things, you know, smoking things, drinking things, and everything in between. And uh, and how old are you at this time? Oh, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and thirteen ish. Uh, so uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. It was a, it was a real awakening. Um, there was a sense about me that uh, you know this just wasn't right, um, and that uh, it got to the point where my my mother was. Uh, it was a really violent household growing up uh we we all walked around and uh you know just waiting for the you know something to something to go on and uh it, it, my stepdad was a very kind of he just was a violent guy when he got upset and uh mom uh, she took the brunt of uh of his anger um you know she uh she was beaten a lot of a lot of crying screaming um and all that good stuff uh and then i, I I looked, I guess I looked a little bit too like, much like my father and, uh, it was just an easy trigger for him. So I would get, you know, if anything was out of line, I remember one time I was uh, walking down the sidewalk and it had snowed and he said, do not walk in that snow. Don't even look. Well, I had to touch the snow and then, uh, we get home, I sneak off the bed and throw the covers over top of me and think I'm getting away with, you know, touching the snow. And, uh, sure enough, the light comes on and here we go. And, there was times where I got, uh, you know, whipped so bad I couldn't go to school for a couple oh, of days man. because they didn't want, you know, I, I, I thought I was, you know, having a couple of days off uh, respite and fun. And uh, it was really they didn't want to see, you know, my face black and blue in, this, in the schools and things like that. Um, but uh, in the meantime, all this is kind of building, you know, uh, some resilience, character, and uh, I knew how to stay under the radar. I surely, surely uh, learned that. But uh, – um, it got to the point where uh, things got so bad between my mom and my stepfather that uh, uh, she held a gun to his head one night. Uh, now, at this time, she has another kid with, with my stepdad. So we have, we got three of us in the household, three kids. And she's holding the gun up to his head as he's sleeping. And she said, uh, there's only one thing that kept me from, you know, basically taking care of this situation. And that was us kids. And that was her saving grace, uh, and, and ultimately ours as well. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, by the time I was about 13, uh, she made the decision to, to walk away from the relationship. Uh, you know, uh, and she was made to believe she was worthless. And then that's why it lasted the 13 years, was because she was made to believe she just wasn't significant. That no one else would want her. Exactly. And she didn't have a place That's right. other than with him. That's and right. All of that. Yep. So tell me about the Lord coming into your so, life. So that 13th year uh, is when we left uh, this guy and we moved in with my mammal. That's where she comes in. Uh, mammal gave up her bedroom. Uh, she had a queen size bed and she moved out uh, just on the other side of the door uh, to the living room, slept on the couch. And grandma, mammal, she... Uh, she prayed every night, and it was like not just a prayer of thank you, Lord, and good night. It was a prayer of, Lord, hear my prayer. These are my children. These are my grandchildren. Please give them what I couldn't provide. Give them wisdom. Give them a future. Give them hope. Give them courage. Everything uh, that one would desire for success in a person's life, she was praying. And at first, I thought it was you know, hey, this is pretty neat. This is, uh, thanks, you know, thanks for the, it was almost like a pep talk. Yeah. But this lady was 95 pounds soaking wet, about five foot tall, 
always, I mean, she started smoking about 12 years old. So I remember she had a quadruple bypass surgery at 38. Now, oh, I remember yeah. her in her 30s because <clears throat> you, if you think she's having kids as a teenager, mom's having a kid as a teenager. So I remember uh, Mamaw uh, in her, her upper 30s, uh, yeah. middle 40s. She was on oxygen and uh, quadruple bypass surgery, frail woman. You know, I remember playing with the castle of pill bottles. That was our toys at her house. And, um, and, uh, mammals out there, man, just praying, praying like a prayer warrior. Um, and it, it just started sinking in and it started hitting and it started hitting hard. Um, I had made some friends in the meantime, uh, and, uh, and, and, and eventually, uh, these guys and, and also my cousin who was two weeks younger than me we were hanging out with uh, which essentially were his buddies and he introduced me we became friends and we had this thing where we would go in these stores and we would collect these baseball card stickers and they had a sticker book tops back in the 80s mm-hmm. hey uh let's see who can get the most car and we would lift these cards and we'd run out the store uh right. and we'd go fill up our books and uh and then it was like bubble gum and then uh and then after after this whole thing with mammal praying, it started stinging a little bit. I'm like, oh, what is that? Why, why am I feeling like a little bit of pain when I participate in this, in this thing here? Uh, you know, lifting things, if you want to call it that. Um, and uh, my cousin um, and his buddies, I, I had to separate myself because I couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. Like spiritually, I guess. Um, and and I, at that sense, and my mammal didn't go to church. But she was a prayer warrior. She was, to this day, one of the most influential Christians that I've ever met. And I've been everywhere in churches and uh, retreats, and mm-hmm. we started some ministries of our own uh, when we were younger. And uh, to this day, I mean, I've never seen anybody uh, pray, uh, almost like cry, cry out in prayer, mm-hmm. you know, and it was deep. And it hit, and uh, so... Um, as I was doing these things, I started backing off, and I started hanging out with another crowd that got into football. Uh, started hanging out with some of those guys. I started learning the discipline of the uh, of the routine of football practice, working out. Um, you know, I had someone barking orders, which is, I needed the discipline. Uh, one thing that in my childhood I'll never forget was, you know, whatever you do, go out in there in the world. Do not bring the cops to our house. You know, there was times when we got raided. All the kids had to sit on the on the uh, living room couch and can't even imagine the fbi and whoever was coming in you guys sit here people's going out in handcuffs people you know investigators are coming in all that fun stuff and uh that happened a couple times but uh and then it got to the point like i said um i i had this a change of heart and i i'd say the lord was intervening um and i separated myself from the guys that were doing these things and uh, i i kept up with my cousin and there was a point where they actually met me at my school bus stop, and they were trying to have me fight my cousin because I had a change of heart and didn't want to hang out with these guys. I was too good for them, apparently. Um, and so they, you know, this was like a brother, this guy two weeks younger than me. It's like, we, we fought growing up. It's just what you do as family, rolling off the front porch. Sure. Uh, and so uh, I, I was like, all right, if we're going to go, we're going to go to the house. We'll just go down the basement. We'll shut the door. And your friends can stay outside. And when we're done, you can explain what happened. And we start walking in the house. And by the time the three blocks later, something caught, it was like squirrel. They went another direction, which was fabulous. All that to be said, uh, I, you know, I ended up meeting my real father um, about a year later or so. And um, in, being introduced to my father's side of the family, meet my grandmother on my dad's side of the family. Um, we're over there meeting them, and uh, I get a call, and uh, it's my mom. She's like, there's been an accident, and uh, it's your cousin, and, um, and uh, you know, you need to get home. So I get home and found out m- my old friends and my cousin uh, we're about 16 at the time. Uh, they were down in a, uh, the old Dorona apartment buildings down there by the underpass in Hamilton there. And uh, they're down there drinking, having a good time. Well, he had picked up his grandmother's uh, revolver, and uh, they were down there playing Russian roulette. Hand the gun over, you know, spinning the chamber, popping one in, spinning the chamber, and then clicking it, you know, up on their temple. Wow. wow. And uh, all I could think was... Uh, 
you know, why, why would anybody want to show off uh, that way to put their life on the line in front of a couple girls with a couple buddies? And he ended up losing the game, right? So he lost uh, 16 years old, and now we're planning a funeral. Uh, and all I could think is, Lord, you did something in my heart to guide me in a different path. Because as we sit here today, it could have been me, Rick, and you mm-hmm. sitting there feeling like we had to spin a chamber to prove something that is life-altering, essentially. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Lord, the Lord's intervention, I would have, I could have been sitting in that that chair. It could have been passed to me. I could have made this, you know. Um, that's a story that I I share with my kids. You know, um, the stories that I share with my kids today um, has has developed them um, into the people they are because I'm I've been open and honest about uh, the struggles growing up, where my family comes from, where they come from. And generationally, we're trying to make a difference one generation at a time. Um, well, but, yeah, uh, yeah so eventually, um, you know, I gave my life to Christ, uh, even though I had the sense that he was already here uh, at 13, 14, 15. Uh, I made some, I made some mistakes. I, I sowed my oats. Uh, um, I always wore a cross around my neck to, to stay grounded because I believed like the Lord was with me. And um, as I was going through navigating, looking for a companion, uh, I made that I made that clear that that was going to be part of my life, and it always will be. Um, and I was lucky enough to meet a, a, a young lady that grew up in the church, and uh, her mother was another prayer warrior. Um, and uh, we became engaged, and um, we got married at a lovely church over on Coleraine Avenue with a, a bunch of friends and beautiful church. Uh, and, um, and then we start evolving uh, as young Christian parents, trying to figure that whole thing out. Like I said, um, but it was it was interesting uh, raising our own own children. Like, Lord, where's the manual? All I <laughs> all I knew is, Lord, uh, if I did depend on the Lord, like me and Rick were talking earlier, things just seemed to clear. It was like a path. Uh, the Lord provided a path. Uh, when I tried to do it on my own abilities, I, boy, I, I failed every time. Um, and uh, and and like we were talking earlier, um, I found that uh, if I take a step bra- back, take a breath, breathe in what the Lord's given me, and think about that, uh, the opportunities, the avenues, the the grace, uh, the hope, the strength, the will, uh, it, it's all my whole journey has been processed and powered by the Lord. Amen. And uh, if it wasn't for Him. I have, you know, I have family members, uh, like I was telling Rick, we've lost some family members to, to drugs. We've lost them to uh, drinking, you know, addiction. Um, and so we all, ha- we all have choices. Um, and, and the Lord uh, made clear that, um, you know, I, I also have free will. And he let me, he let me make mistakes. That's it. Yeah, he let me make plenty of mistakes. Uh, and, and I came out on the other side. Uh, I was humbled many times. And and I, I imagine I'll still continue to be hum- humbled in the future uh, uh, because, like I was saying earlier, sometimes I get so exhausted with work and, and all that, I, I fall, to, fall to sleep praying, or I, I'm so wore out that I just fall asleep without praying. Now I just turned 50 a week ago. Uh, I'm waking up, and I'm praying for another reason. Lord, thank you for this this Amen. new day. You know, Thank you for the Amen. blessing of being 50, 50 in six days, you know. Um, and so uh, when I wake up, I, now I find myself praying every morning, which is awesome. Um, but I, 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 uh, I've got, uh, again, two kids that we raised in the church. Uh, my daughter now is graduated, and she's a teacher at Oak Hill School District. My son uh, is going to Cedarville University, and it's the largest Christian college in Ohio. And if that doesn't prove that Somehow the Lord's working in, in the background. I don't know what does. So God's uh, hands amen. in everything. Yeah. God's hands in us getting together today. Yeah. And amen. and you're right. That That's important for people to understand is that God doesn't want us to come to him because we're robots. We have free yeah. will. Yes. Yeah. God wants to us to come to him because we love him and we recognize who he is. Yeah. The yeah. father of all creation and everything amen. that, everything that, we see in front of us yeah. and the people and everything we're we don't see everything we don't see exactly <laughs> rick i, I want to thank you very much for sharing with us part of your story yeah 
Absolutely. And, and Brother Green, why don't you close us with a prayer, if you will? Okay. At one second, Gary. Uh, Rick, I have to ask you. I know the answer, but for mm-hmm. the listeners, out of all the things you could have grabbed in life, why God? Well, I would say uh, it was pretty evident that the pathway without him was going to end terribly. Um, if you just look at the numbers of my family, um, it was going to be either prison or uh, just non-existence anymore. Um, there's so many joys in life that I've discovered. Uh, we were looking at the sunrise on your picture uh, that you took the other day. There's just so many things that we could be missing out. Uh, take a minute and smell the roses. Uh, take a minute and look up, you know, as you're driving. Um, I'm a witness. <laughs> mm, take a look up. Look at the look what the Lord has put in front of us. Uh, it's majestic. Um, take the time to breathe it in. Uh, this 9 to 5, this in some case uh, 9 to 9 uh, lifestyle, it, it can be rough on us. But just take a minute to breathe it in. And that that's... That's where my heart is, uh, and I do best when I, I recognize that the Lord is, he's out there showing signs and he's, he's making a difference. Well, thank you. That's an awesome answer. I love this today, and let's give God some praise. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for bringing us together this day, Father God. May this podcast not only touch the three in this room, Father God, may this podcast go to wherever you would have it, Father God. May it touch who need it, Father God. May it bring honor, praise, and glory to your precious, mighty, and holy name. It's in Jesus' name, I ask and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm-hmm.